uh, number 103. Uh, been killing South Australian roads yesterday, just after midnight on Anzac Highway, where vehicles uh, left right out of control and collided with a tree. And a 26 year old male has subsequently died as a result of injuries from that crash. And this is obviously an ongoing concerning trend. We've been talking about it ad nauseum uh, throughout this year. But it just is not stopping. And there's a lot of uh, people on the roads who are uh, actually still continuing to take far too many risks. Uh, we, as much as we uh, plead with the public to do the right thing, and we do know there is a large element of the community that um, are doing the right thing and looking after themselves and others on the road, there are a significant number of people who obviously think that their needs are more important than anybody else's and are actually taking unnecessary risks on their roads. To illustrate some of the behaviours we're seeing at the moment and the concerns we have, we have just concluded uh, Operation um, Safe Speed, which was run from the 13th of November through to the 19th of November, a seven day operation. 1,290 people were detected speeding during this seven day operation. I say it again, 1,290 people were detected during this operation over seven days. Now when we ran this operation back in May, 384 people were detected over a period of about four days of when, we, when we ran the similar operation. So that's double the amount of people who've been detected speeding uh, during this operation of safe speed. <coughs> As we know, and we keep um, talking about this and trying to convince people uh, to do the right thing on the road, 28 deaths on our roads this year have been attributed to speed. And yet we still see these types of volumes of people who are getting detected, um, speeding on our roads, and we've seen some horrendous um, speeds as well. 55 serious injuries we can attribute to speeding on our roads this year. And when you put it in the context of yesterday's road conditions and weather as well, it just beggars belief that people are not actually slowing down and driving to the conditions, but instead, they choose to continue to um, put themselves and other road users at risk. To illustrate some of the risks, other risks that people are taking, we put some proactive media out and some education out around uh, the Vado 500. You know, leave it on the track, you know, don't drink and drive, we'll be out enforcing the law. Despite all the warnings, our first night of our Operation Vado road safety operation last night, in the pouring rain at times. We did nearly 1,400 alka tests last night and 85 drug tests. 11 people were detected for drink driving and 11 people were detected for drug driving. The highest reading was 0.187. So again, people are not heeding the warnings. They're choosing their own selfish choices to get behind the wheel whilst they're affected by alcohol or drugs. I mean, some of those are also speeding as well. This type of attitude from people is completely unacceptable. Uh, it is extremely selfish and it's extremely dangerous. We always talk about the photo five, the amount of people who are choosing to speed, drink or drug drive, not wear your seatbelt, be distracted or drive dangerously. You are just simply making it inevitable that you are gonna end up in a crash of some sort, potentially a serious injury crash which will have lifelong consequences, or potentially a fatal crash. So Operation Vale will continue through this weekend, uh, as will uh, Operation Stop Drink and Drug Driving, uh, which again is operating this weekend. And the reasons we do this is uh, 14 people have lost their lives on South Australian roads this year uh, where alcohol has been a factor, and 15 people have lost their lives on the roads this year where drugs have been a factor. Um, there's also people who have had a combination of alcohol and drugs in their systems which have been contributing factors. So the message here is, is that you've got choices. You've got really simple choices to make when you get behind the wheel of a car. Those choices are, as we keep talking about, stick to the speed, don't drink and drug drive. There's no excuse. Wear your seatbelt, don't be distracted. 
you know, your phone call, your text message, your social media is not more important than keeping you on the road and keeping yourself and passengers and other people safe. Um, we don't want to see a repeat of what's been happening over the last couple of nights with the drink and drug driving. If you think you're going to get away with it, um, which we, uh, we understand some people uh, will actually feel that way, have a look at the results uh, from Operation Safe Speed, have a look at the results from Operation Bardo. Doesn't matter whether it's rain, hail, or shine, our police are out there 24 7 and you can be stopped anytime, anywhere, and you will be held to account for your actions. And uh, like I've said many times before, if you're one of the ones that gets pulled over and gets your car impounded and your license taken away from you, you're probably one of the lucky ones at this rate because we probably, those police officers who pulled you over and done that, may just have saved your life. So our message to everybody is please just stop. Right, do the right thing on the roads. Don't become you know, the next statistic um, because we are out there and you will be caught. This is With uh, Death 103 um, yesterday, uh, do we know any of the mitigating factors? Uh, was you know, speed or alcohol or was it you know, not wearing a seatbelt? Do we know anything more about possible you know, contributing factors to that accident? Yeah, obviously really early in the, in the investigation at this stage, uh, but we are considering if speed uh, was a contributing factor to this particular crash. Um, certainly um, where the car impacted the trees um, uh, with the driver's door uh, left this person with very little chance. Superintendent Fiocchi said back in August, he asked the community to wake up and grow up. That doesn't seem to have happened. Is it not the case that there's some sort of cultural rot in the state? People just aren't behaving themselves and there's no real end to that. Uh, look, we are certainly concerned about the fact that uh, there, there appears to be, a con well, there is a continuing trend. It's not, you know, it's not an appearance. There is a continuing trend of people exceeding the speed limit. There is a continuing trend of people drinking, drug driving. Um, you know, we are out there and we are catching people. But despite this, you know, people seem to have in their heads that um, you know, maybe their needs and, and their desires are more important than anybody else's and staying safe on the road. So this is why we keep um, imploring, you know, there are a lot of people doing the right thing. Let me just reiterate that. Yeah. There are a lot of people doing the right things on the road, but there are far too many people taking far too many risks. How do you think yeah. we change that? Uh, well, we continue to do what we do. Uh, we continue to get into schools to educate our young ones. Uh, we continue to have um, significant penalties, uh, which in South Australia, you know, the extreme speeding offence was only, only just introduced in 2022, which you know, puts that extreme speeding uh, into the criminal law category. So there's jail time, other deterrence for people. Uh, our, our proactivity, our enforcement focus is obviously key to all of this as well, and we are actively out there and, and our enforcement levels are extremely high. Um, but I think it's also, it comes back to personal work, this comes back to personal responsibility. Families need to talk to each other, parents need to talk to kids about the dangers on the road, and you just need to hold each other accountable. You know, so um, these are parts of, part and parcel of everybody has to play their part so that we can actually stop people killing themselves around. A we mentioned a continuing trend this year, and we've obviously, compared to last year, seen a lot more uh, fatalities on South Australian roads. Uh, what do you think, uh, coming to the end of the year, what do you think has changed this year in, in the state that could be leading to this? Uh, look, I don't think there's any one thing that's changed. It's probably a combination of factors. Uh, I guess if we actually really knew the, the exact reason for that, and then we'd be able to you know, stop it completely. But um, the harsh reality is, is that there are those five Fatal five factors. It's clear that if you speed or you drink or drunk drive, if you're distracted, if you're not wearing your seatbelt, or if you're driving dangerously, you significantly increase the risk of you being injured or killed on South Australian roads. And as our enforcement and data is showing, and our enforcement efforts are showing, there are still far too many people out there who are engaging in those risky behaviours. But um, lots of people are getting caught. And this is the thing if you do engage in this behaviour, you will get caught. A police in Sydney winding back the speed limit on country roads. Uh, it's not been discussed at this point in time. Are you seeing, uh, like compared to last year, are you seeing an increase in, say, speeding or drink and drunk driving? Are you seeing an increase in any of these uh, risky behaviours? So what we are seeing is like this um, this Operation Safe Speed that we've just run, as I said, 1,290 people have detected speeding during the seven-day period, which on average is double the amount of people who have detected speeding back in the same operation in May. So clearly, you know, there are a number of people out there who are continuing to engage in these risky behaviours. And those 1,290 people have got, you know, a range of things from fines through to um, their car being impounded to losing their licence. So, you know, hopefully they're going to learn their lesson. But, um, 
you know, it is a, it, it's an ongoing battle, it's an ongoing effort to make sure that people are doing the right thing. But as I said before, um, we know we can't be everywhere. Everybody has a responsibility to actually be safe on our roads. In light, about, in light of your results uh, last night, what's your advice to people attending the, uh, the Rayleigh this weekend? Yeah, we just read around the message we've been pushing out there already. Um, you know, leave, leave the racing and leave that, um, that uh, I guess that type of activity on, on the track. Right? That's where it's safe. So those guys have all the safety gear, those cars, especially modified to operate in that environment. Don't think you can be a, a racing car driver on, on South Australian roads because you will come unstuck. Um, clearly, you know, there might have been a few people thinking last night, you know, I'm going to take a risk because you know, it's raining and the cops won't be out there and you know, I can probably get away with it. Wrong. Right, there's 11 people uh, detected last night for drink, uh, drink driving, 11 people for drug driving, a whole heap of uh, alcohol tests done. So, um, the simple message is don't take the risk because you will get caught. What about repeat offenders? Do you see many of them as well? Uh, there is an element of, of repeat offenders. Um, I understand um, that the male who was picked up in uh, Hallet Cove uh, last night, I think 100, I think he made his own. Um, 194, you know, a ridiculous amount of alcohol in the system. I understand that person's only just got their losses back. So, you know, there are some people that you just, um, just not listening or just don't care about themselves or anybody else on the road. But um, there are some people also just take really stupid um, risks when they're ordinarily good people, you know, good drivers on the road. Um, don't take the risk. So it's just, it's just not worth it. So for the most part, it's education and rehabilitation work. Um, well, look, I think education is working because you actually do uh, see a lot of the message uh, being repeated out. You do um, see a lot of people talking about um, designated drivers and not drinking drug driving. Um, you do see people planning their trips and all that sort of stuff as well. So, yeah, the education is definitely working, but it, it comes back down to personal responsibility. There was a um, motorcyclist uh, taken to hospital with critical condition this week uh, after a collision on the step highway. Do we know anything more about that? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I don't have an update on the motion that person's condition at this time. Do uh, the police, sorry, do the police uh, support any additional legislative change at this point to sort of tamp down on this spike or surge in, in fatalities that we're having? Uh, this is something that we do um, as a matter of course, as we look at the legislation that's available, um, we look at whether there's any gaps in legislation, whether there's any opportunities to increase penalties to be more of a deterrent for people on our roads. So um, the short answer to that is yes, we're always considering legislation. Um, so, and the extreme speed legislation is probably one of the more recent examples around um, how we've actually increased uh, the penalties for drivers who engage in those really high displays, criminal behaviours. Uh, and we've also recently seen an introduction of um, immediate loss of licence and, and impounding for drug driving as well. So, yeah, there's a range of things we've already put in place and continue to put in place, and we look for further opportunities to make sure that uh, you know, those deterrents and those penalties are appropriate. Four youths were arrested, or three youths were arrested after crashing the car this morning. Could have easily been more fatalities on our road. What do you make of that sort of behaviour? Stupid, absolutely stupid behaviour. You know, our kids, I think, um, uh, I think they're invincible. Um, uh, two 15 year olds and a 14 year old last night, plus a young person that we're still looking for as well. Um, you know, this is uh, deliberate criminal behaviour that they're engaging in. Um, it does have a road safety element to it because they are in a, they are in a vehicle, thankfully. Uh, they didn't, um, and on this occasion, put anybody else at risk. Uh, that's just straight out criminal behaviour. Last question, thanks. Given these trends, are you uh, worried about, uh, are you concerned about, as we're going into the festive period, that there's going to be more uh, risky and dangerous driving? Um, yeah, we're always worried about um, coming into the Christmas period because it is a, a time to celebrate um, with loved ones. There's often you know, drinks at Christmas time or pre-Christmas, end of year work shows and those types of things. Um, so yes, we are worried uh, as we come into the, into the festive season. We, again, will be um, having specific policing operations, enforcement operations. There will be uh, masses of education going out again, um, as we do each year, with a really strong focus you know, around end of year activities through Christmas and then New Year's Eve as well. Um, so we implore people, again, you know, do the right thing. Uh, make your plans properly, whether it's travel uh, across the state or somewhere else, so you plan your journey. Uh, and it makes some really simple choices about um, not speeding. I'm going to say it, but that's it. Last one. Um, so speeding has roughly had more than doubled. 
has dr drug and drink driving risen by the same factor as well? Uh, unfortunately, uh, drink and drug driving remains a fairly steady and constant um, uh, feature uh, amongst our enforcement activities. Um, I'll perhaps get the media team just to provide you some figures uh, after this so we can uh, see where we're at so far this year. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.